The Jupyter environment is a very nice environment for developing code. It has many different uh, languages you can see that are supported here. It's primarily developed, and it was originally developed for Python, but it's moved off into all of these other languages as well. I'm going to show you with this tutorial how to add MATLAB and Octave as well. Uh, the very first thing that you'll need to do is install uh, MATLAB or Octave. Okay, Octave is freely available. MATLAB is commercial. The next thing you'll also have to do is install Python. If you're coming to this video, chances are you already have these installed. You just want to know how to run MATLAB or Octave in Python. So I'll go through the third thing now. Very, the third thing is to install uh, install kernels. Okay, kernels let you run the program within that environment. There's a little bit of configuration for each of these, and I'll just show you how to do that. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is just make sure I have pip. All right, I see I'm unable to list the packages. Can't find. Uh, let's just try pip three. Okay, I can't find that either. All right, so I need to update my path. If you need to do that, just come to path, edit the system variables, environment variables, and here I have path. I just need to update this to Python uh, 3.8. I just installed it and I forgot to update these. Okay, so here it is so I can find pip when I open that up. All right, and now when I close this and open it one more time. All right, pip install MATLAB kernel. Okay, it's going to go out and get all the required dependencies. And the other thing we'll do is octave kernel as well. So we just need those uh, two. Okay, it looks like there was an error there. Flask cores 3.0.8 requires Flask 0.9 or greater, which is not installed. Okay, so Flask is a mini web server. Um, so I don't think we need that for this one, but uh, let's just go ahead and try it. We'll let this install. It's quite a few packages here that it needed. And... Uh, Okay, and then we'll go to Octave Kernel as well. So we're just going to do both of them. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is this one's just a little bit, you know, there's just a custom thing that we need to do for MATLAB. Okay, which is I'm going to start this command prompt in administrative mode. Because to do this, you have to run it as an administrator. I right click, run as administrator, and then I need to navigate to the directory. Okay, so this is going to be program files, and then I'm going to go to MATLAB, and then I believe you just go to your, oh, I got to check out which version that is 2020A. All right, and then I need to go to extern and then engines. All right, and inside there, there's going to be a Python folder. And you have a setup. So in here, I need to do python setup.py install. And that's going to do the installation that's required for MATLAB engine. Alright, so we have the kernels. We did the Python setup.py install as administrator. The very final thing that we need is to add for Octave, we need to add the command line interface executable. So again, I need to come back to path and I'll edit the environment variables. All right, here it is, and edit. Now you can see the binary folder for MATLAB is already added. We need to add that same thing 
four octave as well. All right, so I'm gonna just gonna go look for it uh, after I've installed octave. I'm going to go to C drive, octave, octave 5.2.0. Now here's a 32-bit and the 64-bit. I'm gonna use a 64-bit and this has a number of executables in here. If I just start typing O, C, and then I'll see it's right here. So I'm just gonna add this to my path as well. I'll come new here and paste that in. Okay, so that is done. Now I have everything set up. Now what I need to do is install uh, install Jupyter Notebook. Okay, Jupyter Notebook or the newer Jupyter Lab. And one of the nice things about uh, Jupyter, I'll just show you, share this with you. Jupyter Lab is the newer version and uh, it has this next generation notebook interface. It all runs through the web browser. And then you have the more traditional Jupyter Notebook. So I know some people prefer, still prefer the notebook, but I think eventually Jupyter Lab will continue to get the development and have more uh, features. But notebook is just a very basic uh, interface. All right, let's go ahead and install those as well. So if you don't have those on your system yet, I'm just going to do pip install notebook and that will install Jupyter Notebook. Again, there's a number there are a number of dependencies there. And then we'll install Jupyter Lab next so you can try both of them. If you don't want to necessarily install anything to try it, you can also come back here to jupyter.org and just try it here through the link. So it's try it in your browser and it will let you try Jupyter Lab or the classic notebook and it'll just open up this repository for you. Okay, but I'm just gonna run it from my own computer and then once that's finished installed, I'll just type Jupyter Notebook and that's going to launch this web page and here I have a desktop, I can go new, and then I'll see I have options for MATLAB or Octave. So let's start a MATLAB one first. And I'll just do display hello world. Okay, now MATLAB, one of the things I've noticed about it is it takes about 15 or 20 seconds to run the very first cell. Uh, that was actually very fast, okay. And then I can do other sales and they're gonna be fast um, following that. All right, and I can switch the kernel. I can just change the kernel to octave here and then just run the same thing. Okay, octave needs very little startup time. You see the output's just slightly different, but by and large, the syntax is very similar. All right, let's go in and just install now. I'm gonna go ahead and close down this one and the notebook and come back to the command prompt because now I want to install Jupyter Lab. So pip install Jupyter Lab and that's going to go out and get the latest version of Jupyter Lab. Okay, if it doesn't work, if you don't have administrative privilege, you can also do the dash dash user, but then there's something you have to add to your command line. Just look at jupyter.org for all of the instructions. And now we're gonna go ahead and do Jupyter Lab and just start that. All right, so here I have MATLAB, Octave, or Python 3. And so let's just go with a MATLAB Hello world and control enter to run it or you can run it from these buttons up here all right so there is the same thing again I can change kernel right here and then go to octave 
Okay, this is going to run the same code. All right, so we set up um, MATLAB and Octave to run in Jupyter. Um, one of the nice things that I like about Jupyter Notebooks is that it runs through a web browser. It's a full integrated development environment. You know, it's, but when you get into more serious programming, you may want to just go back to the MATLAB, okay, the MATLAB IDE or the Octave IDE as well. I'll just go ahead and start both of those. Okay, so MATLAB is uh, right here. This one is nice because it allows you to step through debug. Uh, has a couple other nice features. Octave, uh, same thing as well. Very similar. Uh, one of the things though why you might want this is I do have this uh, course to be to begin learning MATLAB or Octave. So I'll just share that with you as well. If you'd like to follow along on this course, it's at this address right here. It's the Begin MATLAB, and there are a number of modules. So if you've never programmed before in MATLAB or Octave, it takes you through these 12 different modules, and then also has uh, some exercises with Arduinos and collecting real data as well. We use the temperature control lab for that. So I hope to um, hear from you if you'd like to put a comment down below um, and any other additional tips. You know, these instructions will eventually get outdated so as there are changes or things like that feel free to leave a comment down below.